Good morning and welcome to Hillham Church. We are glad that you're with us and we've been singing the Lord's praises and really that's what we need to be doing. If we don't get anything else done today, you will get the most important thing accomplished by giving God praise, honor, and glory. And so if nothing else happens, you've got it right just by being here, and it's not by accident that you're here, right? God put that desire in your heart at some point to be here, so I believe that he has a word for you. And uh, as we open up the pages of God's word, I just pray that you will receive what he has for you. We're going to launch this study on the end of days, and it's going to be a three-part message. Some of you may already be singing that song, soon and very soon, I will see, going to see the king, right? And so some of you will be thinking about, is this, are we in the end times? Um, is this the year? Is this the year that Jesus comes back? And you might think, well, look at all the stuff that's going on. Here we are in the middle of a pandemic. Everything in our world seems to be kind of upside down. Uh, wrong is right and right is wrong in a lot of places. Uh, we have wildfires and hurricanes and earthquakes. It wasn't too long ago when those murder hornets came invading our land. And, and now what might put you over the edge about, wow, is this really kind of the, the end of the age? Those cicadas, right? Those cicadas that you've been hearing about, they're going to pop up in your backyard just any day now. But I was looking at some of these. Do you see some of these, some of these pictures? Trillions, trillions of cicadas to emerge in, in our states. And then I saw this one. Cicadas turned into zombies. Here we got... <laughs> killer wasp, 10 things to know about the deadly cicada, right? I mean, fear, fear, cicadas, billions. Now we get Indiana. Now it's close to home now, okay? Billions of these cicadas are going to be buzzing around right here in Indiana. And so there you have it. And so you may be thinking, okay, he coming back, right? Well, he will, and he is. We just don't know exactly when. The return of Jesus, the end of times, it's an important part of the story of God. It's really how God chooses to bring paradise back to his people. Wasn't too long ago we did a series on God's story, the story of God, and we went through from Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation, and we looked at the whole story of God that that history is going somewhere, uh, that, that the story of God is taking us somewhere. We're just not going to live here for whatever, 60 years or 70 years or whatever, and then that's just it. God is taking us somewhere. And we went back to the book of Genesis where God created this perfect paradise. He put Adam and Eve there in this perfect place in the Garden of Eden. And there was, uh, man had this perfect relationship with God and everything was perfect until sin, sin came into the world. And everything got turned upside down. Paradise was lost. That relationship with God that was perfect was broken. And here we are. Um, we live in that broken, fallen world where everything is kind of upside down. But this event, this event, the return of Jesus Christ, his second coming, this event will bring perfection back. This event will bring paradise back. This event is going to restore everything that has ever been lost. We're going to have a perfect relationship with God the Father. Jesus will establish his new kingdom. The Bible says there's going to be a new heaven and a, a new earth. All things will be restored in its right place. No more tears, no more death. 
We'll be reunited with loved ones that have gone on before us. It's going to be a time when all wrongs will be made right. And so that's a lot to praise God about. The study of the end times, there's a, a big word for that. It's called eschatology. Eschatology is just that. It's the study of the end of days. And there's been books written about it. There's been movies made about this subject. It's been debated for a long, long time, lots of questions surrounding the end times, okay? Like, what year is Jesus going to come back? When's the end of the world? Who's the Antichrist? Do we know who that is? Could it be an ex somebody? Who is the ant? What about this 666 number that keeps popping? So, lots of questions, and I just want to start out, I've got time, just start out at the outset that eschatology, the study of the end times is important, but it's not all important, okay? It's important, but it's not all important. The, the most important thing is that you've received Jesus Christ as Lord and leader of your life, okay? That's, that's, that's the most important thing. We talk about a, a baseball diamond, that's first base. If you want to accomplish anything in life, if you want to do anything good, if you want to get home, you got to get to first base before you do anything else. And that is, at some point, say, yes, God, forgive me of my sins. Help me to trust in you. Don't understand everything. Can't see everything. But I want to walk by faith. I'm tired of walking by sight. I don't want to do that anymore. There's more in this world. There's more out there. So I'm choosing to live by faith. And I trust in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. So that's the most important thing. So don't get bogged down on times and dates and how everything's going to unfold. Make sure that you've got Jesus on the throne of your life, right? Because there's a point that we all need to do that. I did that late in my late 20s. I had myself on the throne of my life for way too long. You know, I called the shots, I did what I wanted to do, but there came a time when I said, okay, Mike, time for you to get off the throne, time to put King Jesus on the throne and allow him to lead, and I will just follow. And so that's the most important thing that goes on in our lives. So as we, I say all of that to say this, there's going to be some things that you might disagree on about how everything's going to unfold during the end times and when Jesus comes back and all that stuff and are we that generation is it the next generation there's going to be some things that we might disagree on but none of that is going to affect how we're all still going to get to heaven okay faith in Jesus Christ gets it gets us there and so there's going to be some things that we might not totally agree on when we talk about the end times and I will say this when you're talking about those last days to other people give people grace <laughs> can you do that for me you know after we get done with this this three-part series you may feel like wow man I I know, I know quite a bit, and you may engage in conversation with some people about the end times, and, and they may say something that you're like, mm -hmm, I don't know, give grace, give grace, give yourself grace. If you're thinking, wow, man, I should know, I should know how all this is going to unfold. No, you don't. <laughs> I don't. Nobody does. Give yourself some grace. You can't know it all. You shouldn't know it all. God is God. He's higher. He's bigger. He's better. And so you're not God. I'm not God. So we just don't know some things. So give yourself some grace. Give other people grace. Give me grace, please. All right? Somebody should have said amen to that. Give me grace as... As I go through this, give me grace. Amen. And, 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 and if you disagree with some stuff that I have to say, uh, send all comments to our first elder, okay? So he will kind of look through those and, and handle those for us. But the truth is nobody knows exactly what's going to happen. Dates, times places, events, but 
I do think it's important for us to study this, and it's the first time that we've done this as a congregation. I do think it's important for us to kind of get a sense of where history is going, kind of get a sense of God's big picture, kind of how things are going to unfold, and the reason why, I think, so that we can be ready, so that we can be prepared, and so that we can endure whatever comes our way. Okay? And so we're not fixing dates, we want to fix our faith. And it's always about our faith, how can we draw closer and closer to the things of God. I like what my, uh, one of my professors said when he was talking about the end times. He said this, and it stuck with me all through, those, through these years. He said, you know what, I'm not on the planning committee when it comes to the end times. I'm on the welcoming committee, and that's how I think of it. I'm not on the planning committee on how everything is going to unfold, but I will be, if I'm here when Jesus comes back, you can bet that I'm going to be on the welcoming committee, and I'm going to welcome him back, okay? So over the next few weeks, we're going to be studying this. Um, going to primarily be in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 24, 25. It's here where Jesus talks most about the end times. I know there's a lot of other scriptures, and we kind of hit on some other scriptures. Daniel in the Old Testament talked about the end times. The Apostle Paul, when he wrote to uh, the church at Thessalonica, Thessalonians, Paul says a lot about the end times. Of course, you go to the book of Revelation. John has a lot to say about the end times. And so there's a lot of ground to cover. And we got to... I guess, as I said before, we got a long way to go and a short time to get there, so we better watch old bandit run, right? And so we've got to get going, and speaking of that, I better get going. Matthew 24, that's where we're going to be. Matthew 24 tells us is a time when the disciples asked Jesus this question, what will be the sign, Jesus, what will be the sign of the end of the age? And they ask him that question in Matthew 24, but before Matthew 24 is Matthew 23, and I just want to take us back to Matthew 23 just for a moment, just kind of a little background. This is before Easter. I know we're on the other side of Easter now, but during Holy Week, during Passion Week, on that Tuesday, the Tuesday of Passion Week, Jesus is in the temple. And Matthew 23 tells us, that Jesus was teaching in the temple and he did not like what he saw. And Matthew 23, Jesus lets it be known that he's not very happy about what's going on in the church. He's, not, he's really not happy about the religious leaders. And in fact, he calls them out and he, he, he tells them why. Why are you putting all of these rules and regulations on these people? Why are you making them jump through all these hoops to, to, to love God and to follow God? And, and Jesus told the religious leaders, why are you making it so hard on everybody? You're making everybody follow all of these rules and these laws, and yet you guys, you're not even trying to follow them. Okay? You're asking all these people to do something that you're not willing to do. And Jesus, after he says that, he says, here's what's going to happen. He said, there's going to be a time when what you see right around here, this temple, these buildings, there's not going to be a stone left on another. It's going to be wiped out. Jerusalem's going to be wiped out. And as he leaves, kind of a mic drop there, he goes out the door and he just leaves them with that. And on the way out of the temple, that's when the disciples ask that question, Matthew 24, and they're outside and the disciples are like, wow, man, Jesus, I can't, I can't believe that you just said all of that about the temple's going to be wiped out and these buildings are going to be wiped out. I mean, they said, Jesus, look at all these buildings. I mean, the temple is just, it's, it's glorious and it's huge and it's just amazing. 
They couldn't believe that Jesus would say that those things would happen. And that's when Jesus drops Matthew 24 on them, and God's word says Jesus left the temple and was walking away. When his disciples came up to him to call his attention to the buildings, and they say, do you see all of these things? And Jesus said, truly, I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. And then they go a piece further as they're talking. They end up at the Mount of Olives. And as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. And they ask, so when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And so they really ask him three questions. Okay, Jesus, when's Jerusalem going to be sacked? When's the temple going to be destroyed? But also, when are you coming back? When, when's that going to happen, that you're going to come back and restore your kingdom? And just when is the end of this order of things going to happen? When's the end of the age? And so three questions really to Jesus. And of course, we know, history knows, it wasn't too many years when Jerusalem was wiped out. The temple was destroyed. But that was just a foreshadowing of what's going to come. And Jesus, when they ask him that question, here's his answer. And this is what we want to focus on with the rest of our time. Jesus answered and he said, okay, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming I'm the Messiah and will deceive many. And you're going to hear wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Okay, don't be afraid. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There's going to be famines and earthquakes. All these things are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. You will be hated by all nations because of me. Okay? You're going to be hated, not because you're a jerk. You're going to be hated because you're following Jesus. And at that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. Many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. That's you. <laughs> going to stand firm because you're going to be ready, prepared. You're going to endure whatever comes your way. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then, Jesus said, and then the end will come. Four realities that we have to navigate through based on what Jesus says here. And so if you're a note taker, you can get out your outline and follow along. Reality number one, Jesus says false Christs are going to appear. And we've actually seen that. You've, you've, you've seen that in your day. It's just uh, people claiming to be Jesus. Uh, different cults through the years have, have proclaimed that they've got all the answers and, and they're the only hope, um, that they're the only ones. Uh, think David Koresh. Uh, if you're a little bit older, think Jim Jones. Kool-Aid. There's lots of cults over the years that have said, we're it. We're the one. Think of Left Behind, Left Behind books. Some of you have read those Left Behind books. Think of the, the, the political figure in that who came on the scene, um, Nikolai Carpathia, right? That's the, he comes on the scene and he says, Put all your hope in me. I'm going to fix everything. I'm going to save the planet. Just put all of your trust and your hope on me. Okay? No, I would just say, don't put your hope in anyone other than Christ. You put your hope in other people, you will be disappointed every time. So, put your hope in Christ. Uh, surprisingly, you know, there are people even in churches, and I've heard it happening in different churches, uh, 
person will walk through the, the doors of the church, just like here we're sitting here, and somebody will come in and say, I'm Jesus. I'm here to teach your congregation today. Okay? And so, I mean, that happens. That happens. I just want you, and I'm not making fun of that. I'm not making light of that. I just want you to know that people are misguided. <laughs> and so we need to know. We need to know that there's false Christ that appear and false hope appears and that's just the reality in the world that we live in uh, reality number two and this is where it gets it gets hard jesus said there's going to be wars rumor of, rumors of wars earthquakes famine anger persecution all of that stuff's going to be going on and i lump all of that together because it just shows that we kind of we're a part of a dark shaky uh, world uh, with a really a shaky foundation uh, yeah there's earthquakes that shake the earth and shake the ground but morally speaking spiritually speaking we live in a world that just has a shaky foundation right we just that's where we are and it really comes as no surprise that we kind of have a shaky world foundation because God kind of gets kicked out of, of stuff and the Bible gets kicked out of stuff and Christian teaching gets kicked out of stuff and so here we are left with the consequences of that and I don't have to tell you you see all the conflict that goes on in the world we talked about it during prayer time today I just people can't get along people don't get along and there's just a lot of hatred and people's hearts grow cold Jesus said nation will rise against nation kingdom against kingdom uh, uh, lawlessness will increase i think my translation said wickedness but yours might have said lawlessness will increase and that just means people will have the attitude i don't have to listen to anybody nobody gonna boss me around i don't have any nobody's gonna have any authority over me i don't have to listen to god i don't have to listen to anybody i don't have anybody i'm my own person that's lawlessness and jesus said that's just going to increase but Jesus said that even when all of that stuff is going on, that that's just the beginning of birth pains. It's not the end yet. It's just the beginning, right? Rah, rah. Um, but Jesus says, when you see all of this stuff happening, that doesn't mean that I'm immediately coming back, okay? He said it's just the beginning of birth pains, and I think that's important because a lot of people, again, they like to set dates and they like to set times. Jesus has to come this year because of this, and he's got to come this year because this has happened. Now, hey, I, I believe, I mean, we're getting closer and closer, and maybe this is the, kind of the last chapter of things, but Jesus says, not just yet, okay? We may be in the end times. I do believe we are in the end times, but we're not there just yet. Think NASCAR. <laughs> Think NASCAR, bro. Some of you will be watching what goes on in Richmond later on. And you may have a discussion after that race. You may say to somebody, wow, man, wasn't that... The end of that race, the end of that race was just amazing. Now, you're not just talking about what happens at the checkered flag. You're talking about what happens at the checkered flag and who goes over. But you may be talking about that whole last lap. You may be talking about the last 10 laps of that race. Man, did you see how they was going back and forth and they was people passing each other? And so, yeah, you're talking about the end of the race, but you're not talking about exactly at the end. Same way if you read a book, right? Man, it was great how the ending of that book was. It's not necessarily the last page. Maybe it's the last chapter. Think basketball. It's not when the scoreboard is 0, 0, 0. No, you say, wow, the last part of that game was amazing. It could have been the last five minutes of that game. When Misty was pregnant with our kiddos, she would have some contractions and she would uh, she would say hey it's it's starting and I'd be like well the, the first couple times around I was like hey we ready time to go I pack the bags I'm ready to go to the hospital and she's like no 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 there's just 
not ready yet, not ready yet. It's coming, baby's coming, but just not yet. Just some Braxton Hicks, right? Jesus says, don't be alarmed when you see some of these things happening. Maybe it's just Braxton Hicks. It's coming, but we're not there just yet. Now, I don't want you to use that as, as, a, uh, as an analogy for your faith, because when it comes to putting your faith in Jesus, don't wait. <laughs> don't wait. Don't put that off. Do that when, when God is wooing you to make that decision. Okay, Some things you just don't want to put off. It's interesting that talking about Misty, and during Easton, our youngest son, she told me that some contractions was coming with him, and I was like, okay. We ready? No, just contractions, no big deal. We'll put it off. Three hours later, I was like, we ready yet? She said, no, no, no problem. It's going to be a while. <laughs> I think it was 2 a.m. I get an elbow right in the side, and she said, it's time. I was like, what do you mean it's time? I just asked you two hours ago. It wasn't time then. Nothing's happening. I said, last time it was 12, 14, 18 hours. She said, no, it's time. And if I would have got behind a car between our house and Jasper Hospital, Easton would have been born in a 2012 Chevy Traverse because we got to the hospital and less than 20 minutes later, right, or something like that, uh, he was born. And so we had no time to, uh, to spare. Uh, so I'm just glad it was 2 a.m. and no traffic was on the road. So... There are some things you can't afford to wait on. Fair enough? Again, Jesus said, don't panic. Don't panic when things look bad. Jesus had good news. Jesus is the good news. He said, darkness will never overcome the light. Tribulations will come, but you will overcome. John 16, 33, Jesus said this. He said, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you're going to have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And so even a mixed up world, a crazy world, uh, you can have peace. Your circumstances may not be great. It may be hard, and it is hard at times. But Jesus says, Take my peace. He also says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be alarmed. And all this stuff's going on. Hurt, disappointment, pain, struggle, loss. Don't be afraid. I think it's a good word for us today. Some of you, I know, you watch, you watch the news. <laughs> and you come away from the news. Man, you are you're upset, anxious, fearful. Um, mad, um, and Jesus says, don't, don't be afraid. Don't worry about that. I am in full charge. I'm in control. I've got this. Learn to trust in me. Reality number three is the falling away, and this is a sobering part of the end times, and you may be thinking, how can it get any worse? But this, this says that there's some people, because of the hard times, and because stuff hadn't worked out the way they wanted, because they've experienced hurt and hardships, that they're going to fall away from the faith. Whether that's blaming God or I'm done with this, I don't want to have anything to do with faith. There's going to be people because of hardships and trials and hurt and brokenness. It's going to say, I'm just, I'm done. I'm done with that. You remember the Apostle Peter in a conversation that he had with Jesus one time. He said, Jesus, there's going to be people that fall away from you. There's going to be people that's not going to follow you, but not me, man. <laughs> Peter said, not me. I'll never, I'll never fall away from you. And, and you know, I know he fell, right? 
He denied even knowing who Jesus was. And uh, that came because Peter was hurt and he was upset and he had a time where he fell down. But Peter did not stay down. (laughs) Peter got up and he turned his eyes to Christ. Jesus restored him and Peter was never the same. Bold, full of faith, full of courage. Peter trusted in God more after that experience than he ever had before. Peter didn't stay down. And I would just say to you, hey, hardships, trials, difficulty, I know they're, they're awful, but don't stay down. Um, put your faith and your trust in Jesus. He will carry you through. Some people go sideways, and we, we may all go sideways from time to time, but there are people who stay sideways. They just keep staying and, and drift and, and fall away from the faith. I would just say, get back up, turn to Christ, and allow him to restore you and give you the peace, the hope, the joy, and the love that comes from him. Just be, turn, be determined, I'm going to endure. I'm going to be prepared. I'm going to be ready. I'm going to endure. I'm staying in the race. I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. I'm in it till the end. Jesus said that false teachers and false prophets would be coming. And I think, unfortunately, that's going to increase the people who are going to be falling away from the faith because false teachers won't be teaching and preaching the truth. Uh, They won't be preaching the word of God. They certainly won't be preaching on the end times. Okay, uh, The Bible says that people's going to get up in front of people and it's going to be a tickling of the ears. Uh, uh, Preachers and teachers are just going to talk about what makes you feel good and and they're going to stand up here and they're going to say do whatever you want go wherever you want to go no big deal no consequences just whatever feels good do it so that's what jesus said is going to happen and just so you know preaching the end times it's not a feel good (laughs) type of sermon right but it is god's word and we are to teach and to preach the fullness of the gospel were to preach all of God's word, not just part of it. And so that's what we're doing. We're going through this study of the end times. And I hold you partly responsible for this series, by the way, because it wasn't too long ago we had some uh, suggestion box. Leave suggestions out in a box, uh, uh, topics and different things that you would like to, to, uh, to know more about or to hear preach. And this is one of them. So I'm holding you responsible, partly, uh, for, for this series. You, you wanted to hear this, and so here we are. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 15, Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. And so, I just, we know that. Uh, whenever you see quotes on TV, or you read something from even a, a reverend, whatever that means, uh, make sure that what he or she says lines up with the word of god because again we want to be a people who endure to the end standing on god's word final thing and this is our closing reality and this gets better the fourth reality of what jesus said here in verses 1 through 14 that's just 14 verses again we got a long way to go so come back next week and we'll talk about some more stuff but in the last verse verse 14 he closes out this section with the gospel is going to be preached everywhere okay and so this is something that we all can be a part of we can all spread the good news of the gospel to others okay god wants you to be on the inviting team the welcoming team um, bringing others into the family of god so that they can be on the inviting team and the welcoming team so we are a church that supports missions okay we're mission-minded our denomination mission-minded we have missionaries all around the globe sharing the good news of the gospel all the kiddos that came up here and put their dollars and their quarters in this bucket all of that goes to mission work goes to our missionaries to go everywhere to tell 
about the hope of Jesus Christ. You have your own mission field, okay? You might not go to Papua New Guinea, but you go to work, you go to school, you talk to people on the phone, you go to doctor's offices, dentist's offices. There's your mission field, and so we all can be a part of sharing the good news of the gospel. You just don't know how God is going to use you at a critical time in someone's life. We have a lot of people who need to hear about the hope of Jesus Christ. World Gospel Missions identified 12,000 different people groups around the globe. 12,000 different people groups around the globe. Of those, only 350 groups remain without a gospel presence in that area. That tells me, wow, we're pretty close, right? Maxine says we're pretty close. The job's almost done. And Jesus says, and then the end will come. And again, it's just the end of an age. We just transition. It's like when we pass from this life. It's, it's life's, life's not over when you're a believer in Christ. It's just, just transitioning from this life to a better life. And there will be a new heavens and a new earth. And you get to see Jesus face to face. And Jesus says, therefore, keep watch, because you don't know on what day your Lord will come. And so we prepare, we're ready, and we're eager to, to see God make all the wrongs right. We need to close with something positive after all of that. Revelation 22:20 20 says, "He who testifies to these things says, "Yes, I am coming soon. Amen, come, Lord Jesus." And so we, we can say that, okay? We can say, "Come, Lord Jesus, I'm ready." Again. Ready, prepared, and really ready to endure whatever comes our way do again want to close on a on a positive note and i would just say the best thing that that we could all do is to make sure before we leave here that we've received jesus as lord and lead leader in our life that that's the most important thing to make sure that you're right with god today remembering that we're on the winning team team jesus wins we've that's we know how the story ends. We know how the book ends. We know that. We know the final score. And I just pray and trust and hope that we're all on that team together. We'll be part of the welcoming team. We'll be part of the family of God no matter what. And nobody knows what tomorrow's going to hold, okay? <laughs> don't know if you're going to be here or not. And, and I don't say that to freak anybody out, and I don't say that to, to scare anybody, but that's just the reality, right? I mean, I think I'm young. I think I'm young. But hey, if I die tomorrow, I'm not as young as I thought, right? And so the most important thing is to say, hey, God, forgive me for my shortcomings and my sin and uh, make me that new creation in Christ where I follow you, I know my sins have been forgiven, I know that I'm a child of God, I'm a son of the King, you're a daughter of the King, and God's going to take care of you, guiding you, guarding you, and directing you to the things that He has in store for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness, how you're always there for us. Um, we don't deserve uh, the, the great, wonderful, awesome things that you give us. But Father, help us to receive. Help us to receive your blessings and your favor. But most of all, help us to receive your salvation that we know without a shadow of a doubt that we are right with you that we're cleansed, we're made whole, and we're alive because you have victory 
over sin, death, and the grave. We thank you in advance for all your answers to prayer. Pray for every family that's represented here today that you would go and, and, and guard and guide and direct them. Help us to continue to trust in you in all things. We love you and we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.